Superman's son, who is incidentally bisexual, is now Superman. People pretended briefly that this was a controversy a couple of months ago, because everything has to be, all of the time, forever. Something about this particular fake controversy really felt tiresome at the time. More so than the normal amount, all of it feels tiresome. Literally, every person that brought this up did so with a reflexive discomfort about having to do so, knowing that the whole thing was so clearly manufactured outrage. Everybody approached it with this resigned exhaustion. Like, I can't believe we're all getting so worked up about such a silly thing, everybody would say. And yes, indeed. I'm coming at this late on purpose. I wanted the discussion to go away and become irrelevant before I engaged with it, to drive home how arbitrary it was and how all of the hysteria around it looks ridiculous even a couple of months later. There is a long and storied history of gay panic about superheroes. In 1954, psychologist Frederick Wortham published the book Seduction of the Innocent, arguing that comic books contribute to juvenile delinquency. It's one of the most seminal moments in comic book history. It's basically the reason the Comics Code Authority existed. It uh, got comics horribly censored, blah blah blah. It's more or less why superheroes have dominated the medium ever since. Which is ironic, because Wortham also argued that superheroes like Batman and Wonder Woman were terribly gay. Which, like most nerds at the time, he thought was bad and a mental disorder instead of normal and a way people can be. Jokes about Batman and his alleged sexual relationship with Robin in particular have been going on since the character's inception. It's a joke which I have always felt says more about the people making it than the characters themselves. Like, do you think a man and a boy cannot be alone together without having sex? Do you think men cannot raise children? Are you okay? Is everything okay? Also, some people have framed this in a positive way in depictions where Robin is a young adult instead of a child. Famously, Burt Ward, who played Robin in the 1960s Batman TV show, thought about it this way. And you're gonna have a hard time convincing me that uh, I'm imagining the subtext in Joel Schumacher's Batman. It's not always a cheap shot joke. Sometimes there's substance to it and sometimes it, it means something important to people and I don't want to take away from that. Sometimes though it is very much a cheap shot joke. Like in the 1990s, SNL had a recurring sketch about the ambiguously gay duo. A parody of Batman and Robin except, get this, this is, this is gonna make you laugh, they're gay. Like, sometimes they do stuff and it's it's not supposed to be gay, but the way they say it, it's it, there's like gay subtext, that's the joke. And although Marvel and DC Comics have had many non-hetero superheroes, Iceman, North Star, Batwoman, John Constantine to name just a few, it seems that making a superhero that anyone, anywhere, ever has actually heard of visibly queer struck a nerve in the complainosphere. Conservatoid pundits served up some truly miserable bigotry on this. And I totally understand why someone would see their bigoted nonsense and feel compelled to respond. You can't just let them say bigoted shit without pushback because that normalizes their bigotry. Even though you realize, obviously, they're just trying to drag you into yet another culture war battleground about useless pop culture ephemera. We can't ever move forward with any conversation ever because anytime we try, they, they just get up there and they're like, oh, fucking the woke schools are saying the George Jetson is trans. Shut the fuck up. It does not matter. Fuck. And an ugly, cynical part of me also can't help but feel like the whole thing was cooked up by DC Comics to generate this exact reaction, to get a bunch of weirdos mad so that people like me would, I don't know, buy the comic to get revenge on them? Or to show support for bisexual people? That's ultimately reductive. It's a standard I would never hold a heterosexual character to. But at the same time, they did this with Robin about a month earlier, and that did feel like a trial balloon. It does strongly feel like a marketing-driven decision, that being seen as pro-LGBTQ plus rights will appeal to younger readers, but also piss off some very loud weirdos, giving them all sorts of free publicity, and making the consumption of their comics a sort of proxy for political action. And don't get me wrong here, I think it's a good thing, I think it's both sick and tight, that queer young readers can see themselves represented in mainstream comics, especially with aspirational characters like Superman. When I imagine some kid struggling with their sexuality out there, feeling all alone, and then they crack open a comic book, and there's the best guy, the strongest best guy, and he's just like them, ooh, that tugs at the old heartstrings. That warms the cockles of my cold, dead heart. Absolutely. But also, I'm hesitant to give a lot of props to DC Comics, a subsidiary of Warner Media, 
a subsidiary of AT&T for it. I certainly don't think that buying their comics contributes to any sort of meaningful political change, and it's a little silly to pretend like this is some grand gesture. Like, to just do this in the least visible version of the character. We tend to think of the comic book Superman as the real one, the main one. But is that really true at this point? Superhero comics are a niche hobby for weirdo adult children. Yeah, I deserve that. They happen to also inspire multi-billion dollar feature film franchises, TV shows, and cartoons, all of which star conspicuously heterosexual Superman. This isn't even the main Superman we all know. It's his son. He's not even the most visible version of Jonathan Kent. There's one on TV who at the moment seems pretty straight. At every step, it feels like it's designed to be cautious around the character's brand rather than some bold statement of support. And yeah, of course it is. DC Comics is a profit-seeking company. Their intent is to sell more comic books. We can't expect them to do cool, progressive stuff all on their own. DC Comics is not a person with a conscience. They're a company owned by the largest media conglomerate on Earth. The people who work for them are artists. Those artists might feel compelled to do cool, meaningful art. But the company itself will always follow its bottom line. We can't really expect better than that from them. Any support they express as an institution for queer people is a calculated attempt to sell more comics. I do think it's cool that they think it will sell more comics. That's something worth celebrating. But that only happened because of decades of activism. DC Comics does not own that. Shut up for a second and introspect, Thought Slime, if indeed that is your real name. Because that isn't far from public intellectual Dean Cain's statements about Superman's sexuality. And his arguments are fucking terrible. Fucking dog shit. Well, I don't think it's bold or brave or some crazy new direction. If they had done this 20 years ago, perhaps that would have been bold and brave. But brave would be having him, you know, fighting for the rights of gay people in Iran, where they'll throw you off a building for the offense of being gay. Now, I agree with Professor Kane that this is not a brave choice. But that, in and of itself, is a really weird criticism. Because he's not saying that DC Comics should have done something even gayer to be brave. A sentiment I would happen to agree with. Adult Superman and Batman should kiss. They should kiss one another. They should get married. They should adopt me. They, sh they could teach me stuff. Just kind of be emotional pillars of support in my life. And I could introduce them to my wife and, you know, maybe someday some grandkids. And I imagine Batman would be distant at first. But over time, we'd develop a kind of quiet familial intimacy. They'd, they'd be proud of me. I'd make them proud. What, what was I, what was, Dean Cain's Dean complaint isn't even that he's not impressed that this is overdue or no longer a big landmark thing. His complaint is specifically that it isn't brave, that it didn't take courage to make Superman bisexual, and therefore it was not worth doing. To which one should ask, why, why does it need to be brave, Dean? It, it would also not be a brave choice for Jonathan Kent to be straight or for his sexuality to be left ambiguous. It's not a brave choice for him to wear a cape and a big S on his chest. Superman always does that. Brainiac Kaniac seems to be suggesting that the only reason to involve a queer character in a story is to deliberately agitate for queer rights. Once those rights have been secured, or just agitated for sufficiently, it is no longer necessary to have queer characters in media. In other words, the inclusion of queer people in fiction can't happen merely to reflect reality, where indeed, many people are not heterosexual. It has to be justified by some greater political need. Queer people can fight for their right to peacefully coexist with straightos, a right they are fundamentally entitled to. But once they secure it, they should quietly stop existing. It's no longer brave. And, uh, hey Dean, that's a pretty fucked up double standard. Dean, I know you're watching, Dean. Obviously, hetero people have hetero rights. Would Dean Cain or anyone else have felt the need to speak up if Jonathan Kent had a girlfriend? I don't see what's so brave about Jonathan Kent having a girlfriend. Why, Superman's been kissing girls for a frog's age. And it also kind of assumes that the fight for LGBTQ plus equality is over, while also ironically kind of demonstrating it is very much not. Now, the Cainster is a pretty outspoken conservative. He loves Trump, wants to kiss Trump directly on the butt. He's the board of directors for the NRA. He's a reserve police officer. I don't want to imply, therefore, that he is a homophobe. I do not think all conservatives are homophobes. But they're more comfortable with homophobia than normal people. Like, they're more likely to be homophobes, obviously. And, and if you're a conservative and you disagree with that, 
no you don't, come on, really? You're just doing that to be difficult, cut it out. Now probably what is happening here is he needed to find a way to criticize this to maintain his conservative bona fides. Pureflix, the Christian Netflix, which is exactly as fun as that sounds, probably isn't gonna hire him if he's seen to be too pro-gay. But on the other hand, if he goes full homophobe, he'll lose his thriving Hollywood career. You're not gonna be a guest star on Supergirl, a show whose creator is openly gay, if you're an overt bigot, except Kevin Sorbo got to be for some reason, so who knows, maybe you could? The important part is he had to be seen condemning this, without condemning anything about it, because that might get him in trouble. So he just said some shit out of his mouth, like he just said words, that when arranged into a sentence gave the impression that they were negative, but didn't make any logical sense in context. That let him dodge having to express a genuine thought. Read his statement one way, it seems to express a support for queer activism. Read it another way, it seems to suggest that the existence of queer people is itself a form of activism, and that therefore, queer people are all serving an agenda. This is one of your classic choose your own deans. What do you want Dean to be saying? It can be anything you like, because he's a coward and too scared to tell you. When it comes down to it, that's all this controversy is. A chance for everyone to affirm their commitment to the side of this argument that was assigned to them by the gatekeepers of political culture. If you're a conservative, you should be mad. It should be important to you that one out of a thousand versions of this fictional character you probably don't even give a slight shit about kisses boys and girls. And if you're a liberal, you should stand by DC Comics, a subsidiary of Warner Media, a subsidiary of AT&T, for the bold, progressive action of temporarily making one of their more prolific characters queer in a way that they can easily change later if it makes people too upset. That's called allyship. Allyship is when you support other people for profit. And I guess what I find so tiresome about the whole goddamn thing is it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be a big deal. It's nothing. This is nothing. It became a big deal because weird old homophobes forced it to be. But nobody involved in the discussion cares about the thing being discussed. It's a conversation designed to obscure a more meaningful conversation. We're all pretending that this is a conversation about Superman, the fictional superhero who wears underwears, when in fact it is a discussion about whether or not queer people get to exist. And yet that's kind of important, actually. Mm, mm. My whole face hurts because I have a sinus infection. But I'm making a video because I'm, I'm so dedicated to content. And also I didn't make one last week and I, I, I need the money. Patreon.com slash ThoughtSlime, by the way. Go there, see what that's about. It might surprise you. Even the desperate old homophobes can't pretend like this is some shocking thing anymore. Like it's so out of place for a character to be bisexual. That's why they don't even try to frame their argument around whether or not it's okay to be queer. They know they've lost that battle. They have to pretend like they're mad about something else. Take, for example, this clip from Fox and Friends, and it, it, boy howdy, it, they say some stuff. That, com that comes after a gay Aquaman, a bisexual boy wonder, Robin, and a gender fluid Loki. Call me when they have a gender stable aisle with superheroes whose sexualities we know nothing about. Why are they sexualizing superheroes? You know, I was a Batman and a Superman, Spider-Man kid. I loved those heroes. We just wanted them to get the bad guys, not a venereal disease. Mmm, indeed, yes. The issue here, you see, is not that he's bisexual. That's not it. They're not homophobes. They don't have a problem with bisexual people. The problem here, and it's pretty obvious if you think about it, the problem here, what they're doing, the problem, obviously, the prob what, the, what, what they actually don't like, and what, what we all see the problem as, you see, is that what they're doing right now, Folks, they're sexualizing superheroes. Folks, when I was a kid, I didn't know what a genital was. I didn't know nothing about the Hulk's dick. I cared not what Blue Beetle did in the blue bedroom. How come they're making all of the superheroes have sex with each other in every comic book, you know? You know, like when you read a comic book, like a comic book for children rated T for teen, you know, you open, you crack open a comic, any comic book you read nowadays and all you see is hardcore penetrative sex. That's all they make anymore. I just want to see a comic book about Spider-Man fighting the big wheel. But whenever I open a comic book these days, Spider-Man merely guzzles cum. Every comic book I pick up today, it's just Spider-Man drinking gallons and gallons of cum. 
It's unbearable. I can't escape my urges anymore. I can't escape my filthy, sinful desires with innocent, wholesome fantasy violence. Is that what you want, everybody? For the youth of today to think that sexuality is a normal and healthy part of being an adult? No, I say! We must teach children important values, like beating up people that ask too many riddles. And, 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 and another thing, another thing, every, you sickos, why are you sexualizing these rock-hard bodies in skin-tight spandex and leather, grappling one another and spreading their limbs in all sorts of dynamic poses? It's not about sexuality. It's not supposed to be about sexuality. It's about punishing evildoers. I want the She-Hulk to punish evildoers with her big, strong arms. They've been, they've been naughty and she should punish them. Nothing sexual about it. Maybe she could sit on their birthday cakes. That'd teach them a lesson. Where was I going with this? I saw a lot of criticism of this clip, which correctly pointed out that superhero stories have always involved the characters' romantic lives. Superman has always dated Lewis Lane. Batman has always had a thing with Catwoman. Spider-Man has always dated every woman in Manhattan. Obviously, right? I mean, it's part of the fun. Romance is important in these stories. You, did, you gotta show that they have a personal life which conflicts with the fun high fantasy adventure. I can't relate to the way that Spider-Man fights goblins but I can relate to the way that uh, sometimes he gets rejected by girls. And that's true, I agree, but also that response misses the point entirely. See, that response applies to what Raymond Arroyo is explicitly saying, but not to the unspoken assumption that a gay romance or gender nonconformity in general, for some reason, is inherently sexual in a way that cisness and heterosexuality are not. If Superman kisses a woman, that's normal. If Superman kisses a man, that's sexual. They love this one. They love doing this. This is how the argument goes. Being gay is a sexuality. No argument there, right, woke lords? Therefore, to be gay in a comic is to display one's sexuality. Would you agree? So then, it's not that I have a problem with queer people. I just don't want sexuality, gay or straight, inserted into these stories. Why? I'd have the same problem if it were heterosexual sexuality. If Spider-Man was guzzling a woman's cum. Homophobic culture warriors fucking love this. You can see Jermbis the quarterback do it all the goddamn time. Finally aware of problematic indoctrinization of children in the same way that you have over sexualized tv characters and cartoons leading to rise in teenage pregnancy you can also have the over representation of certain ideologies and sexualities that lead to a rise in other things this is why we have things like trans trenders are there trans folks out there sure uh is there a reason you have more than ever right now? Probably. It feels like, to me, like propaganda. You can see why it works, right? Because obviously it would be bad to make children's media overtly sexual or pornographic. Predators could use that to groom children, so what kind of monster would be okay with that? Everybody, except leadership in the Catholic Church, wants to protect children from sexual predators. I mean, it's a little suspect there, buddy. Why is it so important to you that there's sex stuff in kids' media? That's pretty fucked up. It's pretty fucked up. And okay, sure, right. Thing is, though, there's no sexual content here, obviously. Being bi is asexuality, but words can mean more than one thing. Being bisexual isn't just sexual. Surely, you must recognize that people tend to experience romantic love with some of the people they are sexually attracted to. That queer people don't merely bone down, but also have normal romantic lives, where they do all of the same stuff heteros do. They hug, they watch TV together, and they fight over which one of them hugs the blankets. The intersectionality of sex and romance is not, like, even considered at all. Asexual people do not factor into their thinking whatsoever, even though some asexual people are in same-sex romantic relationships. They do not bone down, they do not wish to bone down, but they still love each other. And because of the way language works, we would call those people homosexual, even though they don't do sex at each other. Or anyone, when it is convenient, i.e. 
when it allows them to frame queer people as predators, homophobes like to pretend that being gay is reducible to just sexuality. That to be gay merely reflects a sexual preference, and not also, often, a romantic, emotional, or intimate one. That it's like a, a sex fetish. As though gay people don't or can't fall in love with their partners, they don't marry them, they don't hold their hands. And that the only reason they might kiss, because we can't, we can't deny that they kiss, we've seen them do it, right? Is for immediate sexual gratification. And the looky look! Here is Superman in this children's comic book, Kissing a Boy. Sexuality out in the open. Why are we forcing this filth on the nation's youth? As I suspect the people pretending to be outraged by this realize, kissing can be sexual, but it isn't always, obviously. People tend to kiss their children, which I would hope is not sexual. Politicians are out there kissing babies. If that's a sex thing, it seems like it wouldn't help them get elected, actually. It seems like that would make them less popular. Hey, why don't you crack open a fucking Bible? Jesus is kissing dudes left, right, and center. Because kissing doesn't have to be sexual. It can just be a sign of affection to demonstrate the emotion we call love. Framing queerness this way lets you pretend as though what's happening in these comics is sex stuff. They're eating each other's butts and doing foot jobs and stuff like that, even if it's not textual. Even if you don't see a sex act happening on the page, the existence of queer people itself implies sex happening just out of sight. We are forced to assume, outside the borders of the panels, everybody is chowing down on hogs and puss. It's in the liminal space between panels, it's an all-you-can-eat hog and puss buffet. To sum up, acknowledging gay people means acknowledging sexuality and therefore sex and therefore gay sex and therefore the wildest and most salacious stuff you can imagine. It's all implied. Therefore, if Superman kisses a boy, why? That forces the nation's children to picture them having the weirdest sex they possibly can, which is the moral equivalent of forcing children to watch pornography. Children, typically, do not know what sex is, or why adults might like to do it. I don't think they would make that leap, actually. Assuming they did is a weird double-think, right? Because at once children are these innocent beings who, without this corruptive influence, would never have to consider the possibility of sex. But then, immediately, if they see two men kissing, they just spontaneously realize sex exists, and that these two guys must be doing that sex, and fisting. How, how did they get that? Where did, how did they figure that out? How do they do that? No such forbidden knowledge is unlocked by witnessing a man and woman kiss or letting them have even a little bit of saucy dialogue. That's, that's, that's just a little harmless fun. That's convenient, isn't it? In the movie Iron Man, the character Iron Man has a one night stand in the movie Iron Man. It's, it's sex to kiss, but it's not sex to have sex. Chumley over here stretches this already tenuous logic to well past its breaking point by implying that the existence of a Gender-fluid Loki, his words, is likewise sexual and therefore damaging to children. Couple of points of disagreement here. One, the show Loki is not aimed at young children. It's rated TV-14. And two, the mythological Loki on whom the character is based did far more explicit gender bending. And, uh, and here's a big one. There's nothing sexual about being gender fluid. It's certainly going to have an effect on your relationship to sex, as will everything on Earth, but it's no more sexual than being a dude or a lady. Which, presumably, we have to allow people to be on television because otherwise, if people can't be dudes, people can't be ladies, and they can't be anything in between, it's gonna be hard to find actors, my guy. And this is a minor quibble, but also Loki's not gender fluid on the TV show at all. He meets an alternate reality version of himself who is a woman. That's not gender fluidity. That's science fiction. Are, are you worried that this will inspire children to travel to alternate dimensions? Is that, is that your fear? Loki also meets a version of himself that is an alligator. I don't think the show was trying to say that Loki is therefore part alligator, you incredible dipshit. Loki is portrayed as bisexual, though. You could have complained about that. That would have been relevant to what you were discussing. But instead, you crammed in this thing about gender fluidity that is not relevant whatsoever. And I, I think I know what's going on here. Obviously, he thinks gender fluidity is sexual because of how badly he wants to have sex with me. And I get it. I understand his uncontrollable lust for my supple, delicious body. And, and you're just, you're just gonna have to take my word on this. I don't, I don't have any proof for this, but I do not base my sense of self on whatever is sexually appealing to Raymond Arroyo or men like him. There are plenty of ways to have unfulfilling sex without struggling to learn how to apply a cat eye. If we accept the logic that merely by being visibly queer, these fictional characters are, by virtue of their existence, overtly displaying sexual behavior, 
in a way that a heterosexual person or a couple behaving the exact same way would not be, does not that kind of imply that queer people should not be visible in any way? That their open existence is a threat to children? And we can watch it escalate in real time. About a week ago, this absolute brain dick, James Lindsay, called it grooming for Fruit Loops to include a thing on the box, on the box of Fruit Loops, where kids could choose their pronouns. Because now, the, the bar is so low that it's sexual merely to refer to a person. It, the, merely that language exists to acknowledge people different than himself. That, that is a sex thing. The toucan is hurting your kids. The toucan is practically molesting your kids because what he did was, what the toucan did, was he asked them how they would like to be seen, which is bad. That kind of respect is damaging to children. Bullying, though, that's good. That it's good. It, children need to be bullied. Loving and supporting children no matter what? Evil. Encouraging cruelty towards children? A necessary act. That sounds like some morality you can take seriously. Hi there. It's, it's future even sicker, Mildred. This is as steady as I can make my voice sound. I forgot to mention that also Kellogg's workers are on strike right now. And so in solidarity with them, you shouldn't eat Fruit Loops. No matter how well the toucan respects your pronouns. Don't eat scab cereals, please. You can see why this topic is so tiresome. Because we're forced to pretend like it's a discussion about some nerd shit that only big nerds like me care about. We're backed into this discussion which they're treating like it's this insidious conspiracy by queer people to predate upon children. But they're cloaking it in like a discussion about comic book canon. A very frivolous thing. Which works great for them because they can say whatever shit they want and the minute you're like, hey, that, wow, that sounds like dangerous shit you're saying, they have the immediate escape of saying, oh, why are you getting so upset there, bud? It's just a comic book. Relax. Who cares? I don't care who Superman fucks. I never did. You're the one who cared, but... Mm. What I do care about, what I care very deeply about, is people attempting to stir up a moral panic which conflates being queer with child abuse. The ramifications of that extend far beyond what superheroes do in the world of imagination and harm real people. Real people who are already suffering and who really don't need this shit. But if you want to get into comic book canon, fine, let's do that. Anyone who's read Eyeball Man number one knows that it's already canon in the DC universe that heroism and bravery are illusions manufactured by the frail human psyche which cannot withstand the all-consuming might of eyeballs. Well, I, well, that... That's how it was post-crisis. I, I don't know if they've retconned that in Rebirth. I, are, are they still even on? Hello and welcome, welcome to, to the Eyeball Zone. Here in the Eyeball Zone, we preserve small content creators, putting them in little plastic sleeves to keep them in mint condition by putting eyeballs on their work. Hey, we've had a lot of fun today, haven't we? Sometimes these right-wing doofuses will do something fun, like get mad about comic books, other times what they'll do is they'll form a political party to kick Muslims out of the UK. In the policies of Britain first, taking your rights away, Data Mail, does, he, the title explains it pretty sufficiently, I think. That's all well and good for lefty lumps like me and you, but uh, Data Mail goes a step further by explaining it to a hypothetical Britain first voter. In, in language that appeals to them and doesn't assume that they share our values. Like, even if these people are raging bigots, he can still explain to you that it's not even in your bigoted self-interest to vote for Britain first. They're bad. Mortals, you have displeased us and we will bestow the eyeball curse on two this morrow. People are always asking me, what's it like to have an anxiety disorder? Well, sometimes one thing is you could you could do something that's like, just altruistic in nature, like you're genuinely trying to help people, but then get worried that they'll be mad if you do it for them. I have wanted to eyeball BP and overthrow media for some time, but I, I, I was real up in my own butt about it, real up in my head. I don't know why. Which is why I was very relieved when BP sent me an email, because I didn't want to have an awkward conversation where I walk up to somebody and be like, Hey, you mind if I, you mind if I eyeball you? Do you know what I mean when I say that? It's like a thing I it's like a thing I do. Anyway, now that I've managed to make this all about me, Overthrow Media makes fantastic radical content in both senses of the word, including video essays and music videos. If you listen with your earballs, you may hear some of that music now. Do you have a small leftist project you'd like to see featured here in the eyeball zone? 
Well, send no more than one email to thoughtslimeeditor at gmail.com with eyeballs somewhere in the subject line and pertinent details like your pronouns, and perhaps you shall find yourself trapped here. Three eyeballs. Though.